guys, welcome back. I was kind of bored today, so I set the rotary table up on the shaper and started messing around. So come on in the shop and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, guys, here's a setup I bet you don't see very often, or at least most of you don't, including myself. I wanted to put this thing on this shaper just because. I've got a couple things that I want to do just for fun, and one of those is to slot this rotor. Now, I don't need slotted rotors, but I figured it'd be a fun exercise nonetheless. Plus, I'll show you a little bit of how I index this rotary table. So, let's get started. Right now, I've got the rotary table disengaged, or the worm disengaged. And, uh, you know, we're going to slot this rotor, and the tool that we're going to use is just it's like a, I think it's about a quarter inch radius. Let's see if we can get a good picture of this guy. Yeah, just a quarter inch radius. And uh, we've got it offset center. The center of the rotary table and the center of the cutter offset about two and a half, two and three quarter inches. So we're going to put this guy in here. As far as the and we're going to indicate it in. It should be fairly close. I just uh, kind of measured the jaws out with a little uh, rule. So we should be pretty close to. Uh, center. This is just for fun, you know. There's no need for me to, to do this other than just for, for exercise. But, you know, this is how I've learned a lot of the things that I do. Just by messing around. Um, you can't, uh, definitely can't be afraid to experiment because then you'll never Never learn. And using the rotary table is pretty real basic too for those who aren't familiar with them. You know, don't be intimidated. But, um, they are uh, within a day. You can do. You can be real proficient with a with one. Good. Up and down. Let's check it around. Ten thousandths. That's within about three, so we're good there. couple there so heck that's good enough that was easy enough so I'm going to tighten this guy up and bring you around to a different angle and show you how I'm going to index it okay so I've decided that I want to cut eight slots in each side of this rotor and you know this rotary table did not come with the indexing plates I had to buy them separately I think I paid like you know 60 or 80 bucks for them and that's just the, the kit that comes on here to where you can index. You know, you don't have to have an indexing plate. I mean, if you want to do the math, this you can, you can index easily without this. But this just makes it a little easier. And it comes with, you know, this kit. The kit of indexing plates comes with a, with a you know, chart that will tell you what string of holes you need to use to get a certain number of divisions. Well, I've chose eight. So I have to use the, this is a 90 to one. So every time I rotate this handle, or I have to rotate this handle 90 times to get, uh, you know, one rotation out of the table. So we're in string or hole string number 44. So 
for every time that we want to index, we have to go around 11 revolutions, 11 full revolutions. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, 11 revolutions and 11 holes. So, let's just say we're starting here, and that's hole number one. These are your sector arms, or some people call them a spider. Um, I'm, the original ones were plastic. I made these out of steel um, just because they're, they're not near as sticky as the plastic ones were breaking down. But anyway, between these sector arms here, I've got in my line of 44 holes, I've got 11 holes. So I have to go around 11 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then eleven holes, which my sector arms span those eleven holes, and then I move them around. So now in between the two sector arms is eleven holes again. So for my next one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and eleven holes. So that's it. I mean, it's real basic. You can get, you know, almost any number of divisions with a uh, couple plates. This comes with a couple plates, and, and they actually uh, have different uh, holes on each side. So these are drilled from each side, and uh, it's a pretty nice little set. And I've used them successfully for several years. Um, rotary table, definitely not a cheap purchase, but um, if you're running a standard manual shop, I mean, it's a must if you have a milling machine, you know, in my opinion, if you do any, you know, uh, indexing at all. You know, so there it is. That's how I index. So I'm going to bring you up and let's start cutting this guy. Okay, so we're set up. We double checked everything to make sure everything's tight. We've got our rotary table set for our first cut. We locked our rotary table to where, you know, it can't shift on us. And we're going to go pretty slow with this because I definitely don't want, you know, this is a tall setup. And we're coming in, you know, from the edge. And we don't want to, you know, throw this thing out of the chuck. We've got basically zero rake on our tool. We don't want it digging in and lifting the part up at all. We just want to scrape a slot into this guy uh, without any real excitement, or at least I don't want the uh, excitement of this thing coming off. So we're going to run it fairly slow just so I can stop it in case I have any issue. Now I don't have a fixed amount that I'm going to go down. I'm just going to see what the first one looks like, to touch off, and see how it works out. bring you around here and we'll index this second. Okay, we've made our first cut. We're going to unlock the rotary table. And now we have to go around 11 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 11 holes. Move our sector arms and lock our table.
make sure we're right. We'll go and see if we can cross over that uh, first one we cut. So this turned out really nice. I'm uh, more than happy with it. And uh, you know, just thinking that you know this is never going to go on a car. Uh, I'm just playing and having fun. But I, on the other side, I believe I want my slot to start directly in between uh, these two, uh, simply because of the way I think that the braking action works. The pads squeeze, and I don't want them, you know, the leading edge of them. You know, just a thought. But, uh, oh, another uh, disclaimer, <laughs> you may not want to dick around with your brakes. You know, a lot of liability there, unless you're extremely confident. But, uh, but, yeah, I'm happy with that. You know, that's nice. And, you know, you could do this same thing with a milling machine and a ball end mill and a rotary table um, easily. But uh, I think it's a fun practice to do it on the shaper. But, you know, we can control the size of these slots, um, you know, where at, you know, they are, how long they are, you know, where they stop and start, how many, you know, so it's uh, pretty endless. So I'm going to flip these jaws around. This side's going to be a little trickier because it's got this uh, raised hub, and we're going to have to come to a stop, and uh, should be fun. So I'm going to flip these jaws, and... Uh, Set it up. Okay. Now that we flipped this part, and I flipped it and I indicated it in this way and this way. I also had to offset it to the other side of the cutter. And the reason I had to do that, because if I was to have cut it with the rotary table to the left side of the cutter, our slots would have been cut, you know, running on opposite directions to each other. In order for our slots to run in the same direction, we had, after we flipped this, we had to move to the right side of the table. So we're 2.8 inches from the center of this cutter to the center of the rotary table. So I'm going to get this thing going, and I'll bring you around here and give you a better look. All right, I'm going to check our locks. There we go. We've got our little mark here that you can't see, but it's where we're cutter should start to be directly in between the, our slots on the other side. We check our stroke length. That's good. Alright, we uh, bring in a little closer. And let's make this first cut. Come down to the touch.
Well, guys, there it is. You know, turned out real nice. Finish is good. Spaces are even. We offset it up from one side to the other. You know, if I needed a brake rotor that was slotted, I got it. And I would say it's probably a pretty safe bet that I'm a first to slot a brake rotor on a shaper with a rotary table on YouTube. Just saying. There's probably a reason for that. But anyway, I enjoyed doing it. I hope you liked it. If you haven't, like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you next time.